vectors application force so we'll try to review some concepts of vectors and apply them to force which we are trying to understand in this unit so we know sum of two or more vectors is called their resultant right so when you add vector u and v whatever you get is the resultant of that correct so this is what we know so resultant is basically some sum of or addition of two or more vectors now resultant of several vectors is a single vector that has same physical effect as the combined effect of all the original vectors correct so for example if i have one vector like this the other one like this the third one like this and if i place them as i have placed here tail on the head of the previous one then if i join from my first tail to the last head i get the resultant vector and that is vr so it says this is v1 this is v2 this is v3 then vr is sum of all these vectors and that is the resultant vector we are talking about right so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to recollect or recall our things learned during this classes of vectors and we'll apply them to uh, force velocity uh, all these applications right so this this is what we're trying to do here so it says resultant of several vectors is a single vector that has same physical effect as the combined effect of all the original vectors so that means i can replace all these original vectors with one vector that's the beauty right it helps to solve problems now the process of finding the resultant of all the forces acting on an object is called the composition of force now force is a vector right so we are talking specifically now about force which is a vector right so the idea here in these videos is trying to take the information or the knowledge which we have picked up about vectors and applying it to forces and we will do the same with velocity in the next unit so it says the process of finding the resultant of all the forces acting on an object is called the composition of forces so you'll see that if there is an object there are so many forces acting on it right at any given instance of time so with all these forces we can find a resultant force right and that process is called composition of forces combining all of them into one is called composition of forces the individual forces that make up the resultant are referred to as the components of the resultant so each individual is a component of resultant each individual force is a component right and if the net force of all this is let us say let us say something like this then that becomes the resultant force and these three will be its component forces so these are a few definitions uh, which we are trying to understand and how they are related with vectors that is what we are trying to do here in this video and then we have a small question here which says find resultant so we are given force of 10 newtons at 0 45 degrees and 12 newtons at 300 degrees so basically we are given two forces and what we need to do here is find the resultant so the two forces given to us are 10 newtons at 0 45 0 45 is the angle of bearing so it's from north 45 degrees and 10 newtons so let us say this is our 10 newton force from here right so that is 10 newtons 45 degrees the other one is 12 newtons 300 degrees so 300 degrees will be will go like this 300 up to here it will be 60 from here correct that makes it 300 so that is a longer line than this so we'll go a bit more here let us say this is 12 okay now what we see here is between the two forces we have an angle this is 300 let me draw like this this is 12 newtons so this is 12 newtons and this is 300 
degrees. Here we have 45 degrees, correct? And this is 10 newtons. So we have kind of two different forces acting here and that is the direction, right? So if we have to get the resultant of these two, we can apply triangular law, we can have parallelogram. So all these will give us resultant. So let's try to find the resultant of these two. So we can have two methods. One geometric method. So we'll draw a parallelogram, right? So a force parallel to 12 newtons from 10 newtons, correct? And so the resultant for us will be Let's say this is this is the resultant. So let me join it with with a line here and say this is the diagonal of our parallelogram, right? So let me just complete this parallelogram. So that diagonal gives us the resultant of these two forces, right? So we have a 10 newton force, and then we can place this force with its tail on the head, and there you get, right? So we got this force, right? Now you should know that this angle is how much? It is 60 degrees plus 45. So this angle between the two forces is 60 plus 45. Let me write here, 60 plus 45 degrees, which is 105 degrees. So how much will this angle be? This angle will be 180 minus 105, correct? So 180 degrees minus 105 degrees and that gives us 75 degrees. So this angle is 75 degrees for us, right? So now you can apply cosine law. We have 10 here, 12 here, this is 12, 10 here, 12 here, and the angle between them is 75 degrees. So you can apply cosine law and find the answer. So find the resultant force. So by that, you'll get the magnitude of resultant force. Let me say that as FR, correct? So at present, I'm not really solving the problem. I'm just telling you how to do it. So we have this problem elsewhere in the videos where we have solved it, but it's a good idea for you to solve it completely. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is how to solve it. So we can get FR, which is the resultant force, which will be equal to, let me write square of this. And we're taking magnitude of FR at present will be, 10 square plus 12 square minus 2 times 10 times 12 times cosine of 75 degrees, correct? The angle. Or you could do 180 minus some of these two, which is the same thing, right? So that gives you the magnitude. Now once you find the magnitude of this, this is using cosine law. Then you can use sine law and find the angle which it makes with the north or, or some other angle, right? So once you, you, this, you can find the angle. Once you find the angle, then you can say, well, the magnitude of the force is what you calculated and the angle is what you calculated using sine law. So you'll use cosine law to find the magnitude and then you should use sine law to find the angle. Let me say that angle as alpha, right? So that is how you can find the resultant of a force, right? We'll take up these problems separately. But this is just to tell you that number of forces can be combined together to form a resultant force. And these forces are called the components of the resultant force. And the process of doing so is called composition of a force. So this is the base with which we'll move on. Thank you.